Welcome to Right on the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use to help you maximize your money and optimize your financial future. Before moving forward with any of the ideas discussed on the show, always consult your financial advisor, insurance professional, or tax consultant. Looking for financial help or a second opinion? We can help you in your search. And now, your host of Right on the Money, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator, Steve Savant. In this segment, we're talking about one of the most popular strategies on the home equity conversion mortgage, reverse mortgages with popular platform speaker, author, and adjunct professor at the American College, Don Graves. Well, Don, I have to tell you, I've been, I, you know, I go to Nickelodeon or whatever the channel is, and I watch uh, Happy Days, and I see Fonz, and I love Fonz. And I mean, Fonz is a senior. I can't believe it. The guy's in his 70s now. I mean, and he's, and he's doing reverse mortgages, and he's got gray hair, and I guess... I just woke up one day and I guess I, the boomer is, you know, I, I'm, I'm a geriatric, I guess. So it's kind of a shock and value. And so when they came out on the street and they started publicizing all these commercials on reverse mortgages, mm -hmm. people were all over it. I mean, I heard the response, especially initially, was huge. Mm -hmm. But then problems came up. And we talked about some of the misconceptions in the first segment. Let's talk about the conventional reverse mortgage that the funds talks about. Okay. And let's go through that. And then I want to talk a little bit about the mechanics of how that interfaces in your retirement plan and how this could be a huge opportunity. Sure. So the, the reverse mortgage, Steve, uh, as we said in the first segment, uh, we got it out of spooky land and we, we put it back into the financial theme park, the regular <laughs> theme park. It's not spooky mm -hmm. at all. It's just a way. It's just a mortgage a way for you to use your home equity and, and turn it into something that you need. The amount of money you get is based off of your age. The older you are, the more money you get, the value of your home. Okay, hold on, um, just want to make sure I got that. Yes, sir. So, so 62 is qualification, Uh huh. but if you don't come on to, into this till age 70, you actually you'll get more because your timeline, your age, your timeline is shorter? Sure. Your longevity is shorter? Sure. Is that, that the issue? Yeah, okay. that, that's one of the three factors, um, the interest rate and the value of your home. So all three mm -hmm. of those work together to create the income you need. Now, the retirees, those who are listening, um, they, you, you have to ask yourself this question. Am I 100% certain that I'm going to have a great retirement? Now, most people say, I'm not 100% certain. Well, do you own a home? Yes. If that home could be used in one of 31 different ways, perhaps it's giving you more uh, additional income. Perhaps it's paying off an existing mortgage. That's huge, paying off an existing mortgage. Um, whatever the strategy may be, adding to your income, uh, reducing the amount you have to draw because you've supplemented it, can this assist your retirement? The reverse mortgage was always designed, always designed to be used in a way that was prudent and useful to, to prolong the retirement funds. Because I heard on one of your shows years ago, the number one risk to retirement is longevity. Without question, yeah. And so the more you're able to use your home in a prudent way, the better off you're going to be. Now, some people, um, the, the reverse mortgage commercials, um, buy a boat or buy a home or buy a pair of sailing. <laughs> no, that, that's not the intent of it. The intent was, um, I'm living on this much a month, mm -hmm. but life would be better if I could live on this mm -hmm. much. That's a lifestyle issue. Um, I'd like to get a little bit more lifestyle out mm -hmm. of this. Some people are saying, I, I'm living on this much, but if I keep drawing from my savings, I'm going to run out. And we say, well, let's do a reverse mortgage, and that reverse mortgage makes $500 a month. You know what that means, Steve? That means that's $500 less I have to draw down, which prolongs my mm -hmm. retirement. So that's a longevity mm -hmm. issue. So we've got a, a lifestyle issue or longevity, a liquidity issue. How many of you are having, you've got money um, coming in, but you have no liquidity for a trip that you may want or the plumbing or something else that you may do. You have no liquidity. So what can you do? Well, the reverse mortgage allows liquidity. Mm -hmm. And then finally, legacies. People say, what about my children? And I say, what about them? Are they okay? Did you do a good job? Oh yeah, they're fine. But Don, I'd like to leave a little legacy. And I say, well, your number one legacy will be that you don't have to ask them for money as you get older. Mm -hmm. That's legacy number one. But Don, I want to do a little something more. Well, the reverse mortgage can be turned into that. So the four L's, I called them longevity, 
lifestyle, liquidity, and legacy all together in a comprehensive retirement plan using your home to accomplish that. That's a powerful strategy. Okay, now let's talk about this because, you know, the, the, a lot of things that really hurt us in retirement is, hey, I got to pay taxes on my qualified plan. I may have now that may affect my Social Security. I might have to pay taxes on that. Mm -hmm. And it erodes my actual cash flow. But when we're talking about a reverse mortgage, this is a loan. Mm -hmm. And the loan is not a form of income. That's correct. So if the income comes to me on a reverse mortgage, it's coming tax-free. That is correct. Okay, now this is a big issue. S federal tax, mm -hmm. state tax. There's, there, this is tax-free. And if I'm taking my Social Security at the same time, those two items together, if there's no other income being taken, mm -hmm. can actually give me tax-free income for a long time. My reverse mortgage is free. My Social Security is free. Again, my caveat, I'm not taking any other monies out from qualified plan or anything else. That's right. So I know this is a powerful aspect. It's it's not only that we're getting, we're using our equity-wise, mm -hmm. ha we have tax treatment on this that is really favorable, especially when I need it in retirement. Absolutely. I need every dime I can get. Absolutely. To have access to tax-free money in retirement, if you've saved up over here, but you don't have to touch it, mm -hmm. why would you? Um, because that's going to impact your taxes. You can now leverage the home to use the money coming from over here without touching that. And that works in, in a variety of ways, and mm -hmm. we may or may not touch on it later, but bridging strategies. Mm -hmm. Someone retires at 62. Do you need to start taking your, your qualified money right then? Well, you don't have to. If you can mm -hmm. use the, the reverse mortgage to delay that, mm -hmm. that gives your money time to grow. Someone may have an annuity and, and say, mm -hmm. Don, the longer I keep my annuity in the deferral stage, the bigger the payout will be. And I mm -hmm. say, well, let's keep it in there. Maybe your advisor say, let's use a bridge or Social Security. All of these things allow your money to grow longer from age 62 to 70 or whenever you want to start taking it, that makes for a much longer mm -hmm. retirement. Okay, now when we're talking, you already told the qualification age, it's got to be 62. At least one spouse. One spouse. So yeah. the other person could be younger, one spouse. So so if my Over wife the is, age of 17. I, I think my 40 uh, years with the same girl is going to qualify. <laughs> So <laughs> you, fairly certain. He All can right. be eighty. She can be nineteen. Okay. Well, I love I love the uh, spread there. I'm just having I'm <laughs> fantasizing about a, an eighty year old guy having a nineteen year old wife. Let's talk about besides that qualification. My home. They're going to come in. They're going to value it. Mm -hmm. They they get a number. Let's say I'm pretty cool with it. I agree with it. Mm -hmm. I do the application. Is the application way worse than a conventional mortgage? Is am I going to be in there forever? Is this government? Because it's government, so I'm. I'm. Is that a myth as well? That well it's going to be a big long application. We're not light on paper, if that's what you're asking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but it's just a mortgage. Some of you have filled out a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Now, since 2014, the federal government, rightfully so, wants to make sure that the right people get into the reverse mortgage. So there's some qualification. It's called financial assessment. Now, if you've ever had a mortgage before, this is no, you're no stranger to making sure that you've got sufficient income or that your, your debt and your ability, your history mm -hmm. has been in alignment. The same type of qualifications, not quite as strong, are, are there. So we want to make sure that you've got enough income, residual income at the end of every month to meet your basic uh, property obligations. And number two, we want to make sure that you've been consistent in paying your taxes and insurance and, and things like mm -hmm. that. So it's not it's not restrictive, but there are some qualifications that you need to know. Okay, but not, but it's not unlike a traditional mortgage application that you normally would take. It's just a mortgage. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, I know you've said that many times. Now. Just It's just a mortgage, honey. You know. <laughs> So, okay, so I'm, I, I qualify in the age, I qualify in the house value, the assessment's right, mm -hmm. I have really good credit, mm -hmm. I also uh, have income. Now, I, I'm, let's say I'm retiring now, I'm, I'm going to have to display where am I going to get my income to live on? No. Nope. you have to tell them on that? No, or, or? Yeah. most people, it's not the income, most people meet the residual income qual. Mm -hmm. HUD was concerned that um, a few years ago, about 10% of the people who had reverse mortgages were in default. That is, they were going to face foreclosure. And that's the story you hear at the mm -hmm. beauty salon or the barbershop at Family Reunion. Oh, Uncle, Uncle Harry got a reverse mortgage and he lost his home. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, he didn't lose his home because of a reverse mortgage. I mm -hmm. said he lost his home because he didn't pay his property taxes for five years. And the township or the city or the county instituted this. But the reverse mortgage, um, you live in your house, take care of it, pay your taxes, keep insurance enforced. Things you're already 
doing. Mm -hmm. Steve, this is just a simple strategy to be used to enhance your retirement outcome. Remember, if you're listening to our show on radio, iTunes, or podcast, you can view our video version right on themoneyshow.com and request information in this segment. In the third segment, we're going to talk about little-known home purchasing strategy in the home equity conversion mortgage with Don Graves. For more information on this week's money topics, just go to our website at www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and follow Steve's daily postings on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. When it comes to retirement, money management, small business, insurance coverage, college funding, or budgeting. We have the interviews you can use. 